All right. Previously, I did an event triggered control video. And basically, if you haven't watched this, I would strongly recommend that you first watch this video called event triggered control. <clears throat> basically, it introduces you to the field of event triggered control to schedule data transmissions between systems or between a system and a controller, so on and so forth. Um, in this video, I assume that you already watch this video first. Now, as this being said, I would like to talk about classification of event triggering rules in a general sense. Basically, as you previously watched from that video, event rules such as this one schedule data transmissions in event triggered control theory. Here, basically, this is a um, function and it is positive. And we classify event rules as uh, basically based on the this function f. Basically, if f theta hat minus theta can take positive values only and zero, then we say that it is a norm-based rule. I will immediately give an example. So basically, if you are talking about a norm-based rule, this function here or here can only take positive values. On the other hand, if this function f can take any value, positive or negative, then we say that it is a norm-free event rule. So before I go forward, let's discuss about what is theta hat and what is theta. So similar to this video, theta hat denotes a sampled version of a continuous signal. For example, let theta be a continuous signal that changes like this. Basically, here, the, uh, theta hat is a sampled uh, version of theta, and it is basically a constant over the event triggering interval. For example, let's say you start the event triggered um, methodology here. This function changes to here, and its theta hat value stays constant. When an event happens at ti seconds, then you start using the new value of this theta. It stays constant until the next event, next event, and next event. So it is a basically sampled version of the continuous time signal. So theta hat is the sampled version of the continuous signal theta. <clears throat> With regard to this video, if you look at here, showing smaller or slightly bigger here. I used this event triggering, triggering rule. Um, here, basically, this left side denotes the F, and here, theta hat being U hat, and theta is the continuous control signal U, and epsilon is basically the G that is shown in here, which is a positive constant that can only take also, that can uh, also take zero values. So basically, in that video, I focused on I focused on or I used a norm-based event rule. Now, recently, uh, we have shown that norm-free event rules generally result in less number of events as compared to their norm-based counterpart. And um, this is because if you look at this event rule, this cannot get violated when f is negative, right? By definition, this has to be positive, otherwise you can do a lot of triggering. So this is positive, and if, when this takes negative values, basically, event is not possible. And this is true for norm-free event rules. And um, I will immediately dive into examples, MATLAB examples, and also um, introduction of the idea in a simple setting, but um, if you are interested in non-free rules, there are two papers that are recently introduced by us. The first one is called Energy Function Based and Non-Free Event Triggering for Scheduling Control Data Transmissions. This deals with a linear system, and the main contributor is my PhD student, Denis Kurtolo, uh, and this is a joint work by myself and our Air Force collaborator, Jonathan Muse. 
And the second paper, basically, it focuses on agent-to-agent -agent data scheduling. This is more like a cooperative control or control of multi-agent systems or swarms. Again, by the same author, Denis Kurtolo, along with myself, my former student, Stefan, and our Air Force collaborator, Jonathan Mews. This is, I will, although this published in, uh, basically, 2023, as compared to 2022 paper here, Basically, this International Journal of Paper introduces idea in a simpler setting, then you can read this paper that dives into a more multi-agent setting. Okay, now I will cut the story short and introduce you for the first time this idea of norm-free triggering versus norm-based triggering in the simplest setting. <coughs> um, I kind of have a sore throat, so I apologize for my voice in this video. All right. I am considering the simplest problem in the event triggering world, control data scheduling. I have a system and I have a controller. I have a sensor that measures that state X. I don't want to apply control periodically. I, I, I don't want to apply control periodically or in a continuous time fashion. I would like to apply control when it is needed. Actually, in the former video, I was giving an example about this, about how I interact with my daughter. You know, I would like to interact with the system only when necessary. If the system already does what it needs to do, I don't want to interact. I don't want to send a new control signal. All right, I don't want to motivate you further about the event triggered control. You should watch the video that I was mentioning at the beginning. So I will directly uh, move into the problem. First of all, here, this system is driven by this event triggered control you had, sample data version of you. I am doing biggest trick in control, adding zero, plus you, minus you. I am keeping the first you here, the second you here. And basically, u is nothing but minus x. I am inserting it here. So this represents our closed loop system. <clears throat> minus x plus u hat minus u. So the problem that I would like to solve basically is the following. Determine first standard norm-based event rule, which is adopted by 99% of the literature as of today, 20, uh, 23 May. And then I would like to introduce a new norm-free event rule for scheduling control data transmissions. What I mean by control data transmissions, when should I trigger this switch and send a new control signal to the system? <laughs> so before I move into event triggering, um, I would like to note the following. If we were controlling this system in a standard fashion, meaning that no event triggering, I just have basically applying this control signal directly. So if we allow continuous data transmissions from controller to the system, again, this one, basically u hat equals to u, then this term drops. You have this as your closed up system, as obvious. And basically using this energy function or Lyapunov function, you can calculate its time derivative. By the way, this Lyapunov function is positive definite. And once you calculate its time derivative, x, x dot, x minus x, you just have this. You don't have anything here. You just insert x dot here. Um, basically, this is minus x to the power of 2. Or basically, if you insert here, you have minus 2v. You guarantee global exponential stability of the origin of this system, meaning that starting from some initial condition, this is time, this is x, this is x0, system dies out uh, in an exponential manner. Now, as standard in um, developing norm-based or norm-free um, event rules, basically, I would like to use this the same energy function to answer part A and then part B, norm-based event rule development and norm-free event rule development. All right, let's first focus on answering problem one, norm-based. I would like to main, you know, address norm-based first because, again, this is extremely common in the literature because it is uh, first introduced in 2007 by Paola Taboada. I should write the name here, Tabu. 
other, which is the, um, you know, the first, he come up with the idea of event triggering first, and in his seminal uh, 2007 paper published on IEEE transactions on uh, automatic control, um, he introduced event rules in a norm-based setting, and then almost all the literature uh, built up on his seminal work and developed norm-based architectures. And um, until now that we studied norm-free. But I would like to give a taste of uh, norm-based and norm-free. If, uh, if you are using in your research norm-based event triggering rules, this is another video of highlighting you know, um, how we develop event rules. Or if you are interested in um, new event, norm-free event rules, this is your first video that introduces this idea. Then after you watch this video, I will strongly suggest that you read the two papers that I mentioned at the beginning. All right. We have this closed-up system. Now we would like to schedule U hat minus U. Right, we are looking at now this system and we would like to schedule control data transmissions. I am using the same Lipunov function or energy function. I am calculating x x dot. Now x dot is nothing by this guy. I am inserting it here. And then I am keeping this the first term here, the second term here. Uh, you can always pause the video and see the derivation. And basically, I am now taking the norm, in this case, we are dealing with scalars, right? Scalar system, so absolute values. Then we have absolute value of x multiplied by absolute value of u hat minus u. At this point, when you reach at this point, it is time to introduce the norm-based rule. I am going to use this. So this is my f of basically f map f and this is my map g this is just a co positive constant for now and basically after you insert this upper bound to here you have minus x to the power of 2 and this note that absolute value of x is basically this so that from here you can write this you can insert then your v Basically, you can guarantee here global exponential stability as long as this term is positive. So uh, the value that you are going to choose for the value of k that you are going to choose for your event rule needs to be between, you know, it basically it needs to guarantee 1 minus k greater than 0. Now I would like to show two MATLAB studies. Basically, I applied this event rule shown in here, absolute value of u hat minus u, uh, less than or equal to kx. Basically, if this holds, I don't need to do event. I don't need to send a new control signal to the system. But once this is violated, basically I want u hat to be the new ti control signal otherwise you are basically lose right stability that's why we enforce this event rule now if we once you implement this event rule if you choose k to be 0.2 basically your you had control signal will look like this and this results in 35 number of events one uh, one two three four five you can count now, if you choose k to be 0.8, it, it basically um, results in less, much less number of events, 13 in this case. And basically, in both cases, you can see from the x, I choose the initial condition of x to be 1. Basically, it approaches to 0 in a global exponential stability manner around 3 seconds. This was with the norm-based uh, event rule, and um, I would like to highlight one more time. This was f. It can only take positive values, um, so it is norm-based rule. Now I would like to move into a norm-free rule. How we develop norm-free rules? I have the same closed-loop system, I have the same Lyapunov function, and I have the same x x dot Lyapunov derivative. I would like to choose a norm free event triggering rule such that v dot is less than zero. I am inserting here x dot again here. I am grouping this term like this and like this. Now, in contrast to norm-based rules, I am not taking any norms, any upper bounds. 
Now, this is the time to introduce the non-free event rule. Basically, I am taking this. As you can see, this new F can take negative or positive or zero values. So this is my event rule. When this is violated, I would like to send new control signal to the system. So again, this is a positive constant. If you basically upper bound this Lyapunov derivative by using this, you basically arrive this. Grouping terms following the same steps, you have once again global exponential stability as long as this is positive. If this is positive, your Lyapunov function is positive so that your Lyapunov derivative is less than zero, you can guarantee global exponential stability. I am pretty excited to show you the next um, part of this video. Here it is. Regardless of you choose k to be 0.2 or 0.a, Basically, in this case, I start from minus 1, minus 1. Um, you basically go to 0, go to 0, around 1 second. You have basically 0 0.2, 0 0.f, 0 0.8. You only have one event. By the way, um, you can ask why you started here from 1 and why you are starting from minus 1 here, initial condition. I was running, before I prepared this video, I was running different simulations. Actually, if you choose your initial condition to be 1, let's say this is 1, this is 0, then you will converge to 0 in this case like this. Um, I just put a wrong simulation here, but I mean, basically wrong initial condition simulation is correct. So you can um, test it yourself and basically you are going to see, you are going to converge to one, you know, basically zero in one event in this case. Um, so, take my word for it, you have one event, one event, you converge to zero around one second. Now, this is the case if you start your initial condition from 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.2, 1, um, any initial condition for this scalar integrator system, right? We are looking at x dot equals to minus u. <coughs> I apologize. So, uh, basically, if um, you look at the two papers that focus on non-free that I mentioned earlier, when you go from x dot equals to u hat to more like x dot equals to ax plus b u hat or multi-agent systems, <coughs> you are going to see that, you know, you may have more events because, you know, we are looking at a simple case and we have one event right now. As the systems get complicated, you can have more events. But based on my personal uh, experience, I will say that non-free event rules results in much less number of events generally as compared to norm-based event rules. That's why it was our pleasure to introduce you introduce these non-free event rules with my PhD student um, to the community. By the way, finally, I didn't provide a MATLAB code <coughs> um, basically um, in the simulation study because it is literally, I already provide you, you know, um, a MATLAB study for the event event triggered control example, if you go to 1.55 um, of that video, you know you can see the code. All you all you all you really need to do is to replace this with u hat equals to minus x, and the control signal here it with u hat equals to minus x, and the system we are looking at here is x equals to you know, uh, x plus dt u hat. This is the discretized version of x that equals to u hat. And insert your norm-free or norm-based rules to here, and then you implement, you are going to get the same figures that I showed you. And you can choose your initial, any initial condition to see uh, norm-free results in less events as compared to norm-based. All right, thanks.